Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. My name is Julian and in today's episode, we're going to be continuing that series of episodes that I've been making about each individual NHL team. Today we're talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs. We're going to go through their lines and then we're going to go through what players are being drafted in fantasy and if I think you should draft those players or if I think you should avoid those players. Before we get started guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs this year. So every subscription really helps me. Thank you so much, guys. Without further ado, let's jump into the Leafs' projected lines this year. On that top line, we got Nick Ritchie, Austin Matthews, and Mitch Marner. On that second line, we have Ilya Mikheyev, John Tavares, and William Nylander. On that third line, we have Kerfoot, Camp, and Kasha. And on the fourth line, we have Michael Bunning, Spezza, and Simmons. So jumping into the Toronto Maple Leafs players... And the player who's being drafted the earliest in drafts is Austin Matthews, currently being drafted around number eight in drafts. I have him ranked in the top five at number five in drafts. So if you can get him towards number eight, it's a freaking steal in my opinion. Austin Matthews is an insanely, insanely talented player, and he's going to score a lot of goals and possibly win that Rocket Richard trophy once again this year. Next is Mitch Marner, and if he can stay healthy... The dude's going to hit 90 points this year easily, very easily. He plays alongside Austin Matthews on the power play and on his line. He's going to have a hell of a season. Do not hesitate in drafting Mitch Marner. Next is Jonathan Tavares, currently being drafted around 40th overall. And Tavares, another insanely talented player, should get a lot of power play time and should have a very high point total this year. Expect about a point per game pace, so at the very least, I see Tavares getting about 80 points this year. Next is Morgan Riley, Leafs number one defenseman. He's going to be playing that top power play with Matthews, with Marner. It's going to be pretty easy for him to put up points. Yeah, he hasn't been as good in the last couple seasons, but the dude has every opportunity to put up points. The only thing that could stop him from putting up a large amount of points is if Sandine somehow steps in and becomes that number one defenseman in Toronto which I don't really see happening. I think Morgan Riley is going to have a very safe floor of 50 points this year. Next are Leafs goaltenders, Jack Campbell and Peter Morozik. And unfortunately, we don't know what the goaltender split's going to look like in Toronto. If I had to guess, I'd say Jack Campbell is going to get more starts. So it might be like a 60-40 split, but I'm not really sure. It could end up being a 50-50 split if both goalies play well, right? It's hard to tell, which is why I'm probably going to look to avoid both of these goalies. But if I really, 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 for some reason, wanted a Leafs goaltender, I'd take Jack Campbell. Honestly, though, there are goaltenders much later in the draft that have a much more sure role on their team. So I'd probably stay away from Campbell and Mrazek, and I'd go for those kinds of goalies, guys like Jari and Marstrom. Next is William Nylander, and I really like the way Nylander looked in the playoffs last year for the Leafs. He was by far their best player with eight points in seven games, and I can see him carrying that momentum into the regular season. He's going to play the entire regular season with John Tavares like he always does, and I can honestly see him having a career season this year. His numbers the last couple of years are showing that he can have a really, really strong point total season if he gets to play a full season. He didn't play, obviously, a full season the last couple of years because last year was a shortened season, and the year before that, he got a little bit injured. Expect him pretty close to a point per game pace. Could potentially hit 70 points this year. Next is Jake Muzzin. And if you're drafting Muzzin, you're not really drafting him for offense. You're drafting him for peripherals. The guy shoots twice a game, had the 23rd most block shots in the league, and he also hits a very, very nice amount. He's got a very safe floor for those of you that have all of those categories in your league. And he's also going to put up about a point every couple of games as well, which does not hurt. Next is Nick Ritchie. And right now he's slated to be on the top line and the top power play with Matthews and Marner. That's pretty good for him. And the nice thing about Ritchie is his peripherals are nice. The dude shoots the puck a pretty nice amount and he also hits a lot. So if you're in a bangers league, this guy might have a serious amount of value because he may also be able to produce, right? He's skating alongside the Leafs two superstars. So he should be able to put up a decent amount of points. Last year, he managed to put up a point every second game, and he was not skating with Bergeron, with Marchand, with Pasternak. Yeah, he was on the power play with them, 
for a good amount of the season, but he wasn't skating on their line. So skating on Matthews' line, as well as a power play, he could put up a really good season potentially and could be really worth his late round ADP. Next is Michael Bunting. And he's looked amazing in the preseason. And he actually counts as a rookie this year. He's a very good player. If he does end up skating on the second line with Tavares and Nylander to start the year, then yeah, he's got some value. If he ends up skating on the fourth line where he is right now, mm, less high on him. Depends where he ends up being positioned in the lineup. But the dude has some potential to have a good season. Next is Rasmus Sandin. And he has some upside, right? In the playoffs last year, he was the defenseman on the top power play for the Leafs. I don't necessarily think that that's going to continue this year, but if it does, he could have some value and that would really cut into Morgan Riley's value. I'm not super excited about him yet, but if he does suddenly get that top power play, he's someone I'll pick up. And last but not least is Ilya Mikheyev. And he's not someone I'm going to draft right now, but he's someone I'm keeping an eye on. In his first season in the NHL, which was two seasons ago, he showed some flashes that he could be a pretty good player. Last year, he didn't get the deployment that he really wanted to, but right now he's skating with Tavares and Nylander. So if he ends up sticking on that line, potentially he could put up some decent offensive numbers. Again, though, I'm not drafting him yet. I'm keeping an eye on him, and I'm seeing how he does before making any kind of move. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tips.